Hi, welcome back to SAP Business Object Processing Framework Demo Series. So today we're going to see how we can model the validation and how we can implement the validation class and how we can test the validation in our business object test transaction code. So let's take a use case. Okay, so we know we already model the <coughs> action for the the changing the life cycle status of our order from the new to the confirmed and delivered finished and rejected to the different status to ensure that now whenever we are changing the status to <coughs> confirmed okay so the line item the corresponding order instance has to be in new status so that kind of validation so if you say finished okay which means so your order is already delivered then only it can change it to the finished status okay so we don't want allow the you know user to execute any action from one state any status to so it's kind of a process flow so the order can move from new to confirmed confirmed to <coughs> delivered from delivered to finished so that's a life cycle of your order and the rejection can be doable in any of the status. So if you if the order has been any of the status, the rejection can be possible. So that's a way we want to have the business logic to be implemented to ensure that the action is being executed in the right order. So to start the validation part, okay, let's go and open our business object build tool, export tool. So the transaction code, as you know from the previous session, BOBX and open our business object. Return order and the expand the node elements root and you know that so there is a validation as a node. Let's edit the business object and try select the validation. Right click, create action validation so we have a two validation so which is one is called as a consistency validation so basically you no know, you want to have the the entire node or entire business object is consistent or not to have uh, all the data validation to be done before you go and save the data into a database or maybe a, your framework buffer so that kind of validation you can put it inside your consistency validation so for the particular action or the function execution, you want to have a validation to be built up, then you go with the second option, action validation. So for this case, the use case which we discussed now, which is to you know, changing the status from one status to another status, so whether that is allowed or not, that kind of validation we want to build it, so which is going to be action validation. So let's select this action validation, okay? so. Yes, as we know, we build the class, which is a simple class for all the status, okay? So that's the way we want to do it. So let's do a simple validation, okay? Sim single validation for all the uh, you know, status changes. We can do that, or maybe you can go and create a separate, separate validation with a separate, separate class to control your statuses. So for this, let me put it, I'll go with the same approach what we done it here. So let me put it uh, valid VLD or I'll put it check, check um, delivered. Okay. So deliver is action is allowed when you are there, when you are in in the uh, confirmed status. So once the order is confirmed only, you should be able to change the status to deliver. Or maybe if there isn't status and finished, you want to push that you know, back to delivered status. So kind of reverting to the previous stage, we can allow it. So either way, so we put the logic only for the confirmed to deliver status. So if the order is a new status, we cannot directly put it for the delivered. So we should move it to first confirm, then we want to move it to the deliver status. So that's the validation we are going to build. So check the order status is yes. 
this is a validation category which is action check then the class which you want to implement so we're just following it same approach so cl underscore v underscore root you give a class name as common which is i can use it for the status let's see status okay so now the class has been provided so the class is not available let me save this business object first and double click on your class name double click on your class name so it's asking the dialog box to confirm for the creation of class and yes so yeah so now you see similar to your determination and action this also this class also the validation class also use the super class to create the object so that is a super class which is also implement the interface called frw validation this interface has the methods check delta check and execute so execute is a common one across your determination validation and action so let's check the now let's go and double click the execute method and go for the implementation or otherwise you can go use this up you can go on double click which will allow you to to the coding area i believe this is a redefined method it's already redefined <laughs> let's double click that to open the implementation of method so open the signature to understand what is there in the method method as a validation so same approach so we have the um, uh, exporting parameter eo message and et fail key so clear eo underscore message and clear et underscore failed key okay save your changes and so do the check and activate your class definitions so just select all the object because all are belongs to the same class definition and implementation let's activate it so now this object is active let's go and check what is the signature so as per the previous as you understand in the previous classes so we have the context so again this i guess context is available framework context if you see here this is again the last part is in val so if you see it in determination it is det and in the action it is act in the validation it is called validation so if you double click the structure same similar almost similar format you have a bo key and you have root key so from which bo this validation has been uh, called uh, which bo this validation is available and what is a bo root key and what is your node key where the validation has been modeled and what is your validation key and for this validation what is action key because you know that we, so the same validation can be attached to multiple <coughs> actions sorry for it multiple actions so that's the reason it also triggers it's also going to tell you okay this validation is currently triggered for this particular action so that is the action key is going to be there so then you have action parameter and valuation time and all that information will be available to to you know decide whether this validation is called from which place so second parameter is it key so which are the instance where the validation is been triggered i will read it's you know it because see you don't have io modify because validation is meant to validate your data not to change your data so it's not going to allow you to change your data so obviously that's the reason you will not have the io modify i will read to read your data of your business instance you will be there. so framework message you know it so it's a message where you want to rise it from your validation if there is any failure or success or error message or warning message you want to rise you will create the you now you will append the messages into the io message fail key as i said now for this how many it key which is coming how many validation has been how many instance where the validation is passed and how many instance where the validation is failed for the failed instance you will append that information back to the et fail key where 
the fr then the framework will understand okay these are the instance the validation has been failed though i don't want to process those instance further and the remaining the action can be so so validation will execute before your action so so you are selecting the instance five instance and for that five instance okay so two instance where the validation is failed and the three instance where the validation has been passed so the action the corresponding action okay where the validation is been triggered so action will be called for only those three instance not for all the five instance that's the reason you know the framework will take care of it so okay so which are the failed instance which cannot be the action cannot be executed so the framework will remove that keys the instance from the it key when it is calling the action execution part so that's the way the framework will control it so that is the reason you have to pass back that information as a et fail key if that validation has been failed so also you have to make sure that you pass the error message for that so this is where your execute method signature let's go back and check that check delta and check delta so check delta you can see is similar to your relevant data changes if that particular instance has some data changes has been happened whether that data changes is relevant for this validation or not that's a point in time you can use the check delta <coughs> so is is ctx which is the same structure i will read ct key you can control it so which are the instance where the validation needs to be trigger need to be process you can stop it you can handle it here go back and check again it'll be a similar one you have is ctx framework read and ct fail key yeah that's on your validation class so these are the three method which you can control it how the validation to be triggered and let's see in the next class next session how we can implement the validation for our action thank you